I'm going to paint and decoupage a wooden salt and spice box and then use fine line crackle and some antiquing techniques to make it look farmhouse old. Hi there my crafty friends. I'll give you step-by-step -step follow along instructions in this video. Make sure you stick around so you can see how it all comes together. If you're ready, let's make a mess. I got this cute salt and spice box set at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to give it a quick sanding to smooth out any rough edges. I got this little hand sander on Amazon. It works really well. I'll leave you a link in my description box in my favorite tool section. Just in case you want to check it out. I'm going to give everything two coats of white paint. I'm not painting the inside of the boxes though because I want them to be food safe. Send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. Decoupage mixed media canvases or more mason jar decorating. Your suggestion could be my very next video. I answer every single comment I receive. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments. I printed and cut out all the pictures of the herbs using my Cricut machine. I sprayed them with a matte spray to seal the ink so it doesn't run when I decoupage it to the boxes. And now I'm removing them from the paper. Now I realize everyone doesn't have a Cricut machine. If you don't, I have a solution for you. I'll be putting together a package that will be available in my Etsy shop. It'll contain the printed material and cut pictures of all the herbs. I'll spray them with sealer and remove them from the paper. They'll be ready for decoupage the minute you receive them. I'm also putting together a kit for purchase in my Etsy shop as well. That'll contain what you need to make this project. Everything but the paint, since that's of personal taste. If you get a minute, check it out. The link for my Etsy shop will be below in my description box. I'm wetting the paper around the verbiage that's going on the front of the spice box holder, and then tearing the paper to size. The water helps the paper tear easier, and when decoupaging, it's much easier to blend a picture with torn edges rather than a sharp cut edge. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. I love hearing from all of you. And now it's time to start decoupaging all these cute little herbs on the three boxes. I'm starting with the base and I'm using Mod Podge. I'm rolling over the image with a round sponge to remove any air bubbles. If you're enjoying and finding some value in this video, please hit that like button for me. Doing so helps my channel to grow and sends this video to more people out there. That way I can continue to bring you awesome tutorials. Thanks for doing that. And then I painted a coat of Mod Podge over top of the images. I'm putting four different herb pictures on each box. I'm going to take them from the bottom of the box up and over the top of the lid. I'm using painter's tape to secure the lid so it doesn't move while I'm decoupaging the pictures on. I'm getting ready to start rolling out my Easter projects. There will be lots of cute little bunnies. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. Make sure you click on the bell so you'll be notified when I upload each video. Once you have a couple of the images decoupaged on the box, the lid becomes sturdy and you can remove the tape. Mm -hmm. 
So tell me what you guys think about this project so far. I think it would look good with a black background too. Tell me in the comments what color background you think would look good. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other two boxes, but there are 12 different pictures of herbs, so each box will look uniquely different. Now I'll let that dry for a few hours. Now that the paper is dry, I can safely cut it with my X-Acto blade, right in the crack between the box and the lid. I'm going to add a crackle finish using Pentart's Two-Step Fine Line Crackle Finish. I use this one a lot, it's actually one of my favorites. And I'm applying component number one right now. It goes on white but dries clear and it takes about an hour or so. Component one is dry, so I'm brushing on component two. This liquid is an amber color. Make sure you apply a thin, even coat. If it drips or builds up in a corner somewhere, you'll be able to see the amber color when it dries. Other than that, it looks clear when dry. Now I'll let that dry for several hours or even overnight. Once it dries, you'll start seeing all the cracks and that's when all the fun begins. I have some beautiful cracks going on here and now I'm going to add some antiquing to all the pieces. I'm using a soft cloth to wipe it on everywhere and then wipe it off right away and buff it a little bit. It will stay in all the little cracks and crevices and corners making them stand out and giving this little gem a beautiful old farmhouse look. I'm using dark brown oil paint as my antiquing medium. This makes such a great antique. It's much less expensive than some of the other solvent-based antiquing pastes and does the exact same job. Not to mention, oil paint comes in a lot of different colors. So you can antique your pieces in any color under the sun. For instance, if you painted this project in black, you could use white oil paint to make your cracks stand out. And I think that would actually look beautiful. Once you do a crackle finish, you can't use anything water-based on it any longer, or your crackle finish will be ruined. And I am speaking from experience. I did that one time and one time only. Any antiquing mediums or clear finishes need to be solvent based. Now I'm taking a little gold rub and buff on my finger and rubbing it around all the edges. This will add to the aged and worn look. Plus a little gold adds to the prettiness. That really looks good now. I just love it. And I'm also painting the three little knobs on the top of the lid gold. I'm giving all the pieces a coat of clear gloss brush on varnish. Since I've done a crackle finish, it's a solvent based varnish. However, after it dried, it just wasn't glossy enough for me, so I added a coat of spray-on varnish, and that turned out awesome. Since it's for a kitchen, I wanted it to have a good, thick, clear coat for easy cleaning, and the brush-on varnish didn't seem to accomplish that. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist.
Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And don't forget to click that bell so you're notified when I upload a new video.